Hi, I'm Alan. I'd like to uh, uh, welcome you to CMTI. I want to go through and uh, do a problem. You're going to have a number of um, math problems, figuring loads and so forth. And um, so I'm, I'm going to go through one with you and uh, you can come back to this from time to time and, uh, and see how this is done. Before we get into that, I'd like to clear up uh, a question about net and gross. I, I want you to understand the difference between net and gross. So this is a fuel tank. If it is loaded to this level here at 60 degrees, that is net. If, let's see, the temperature is at 50 degrees, the level would be somewhere around here. And that would be gross. If it were 70 degrees, it would expand and the level would be up here. And that would be gross. So this is the difference. If, as, as product heats up, it expands. As it cools down, it contracts. It can change the level in the tank. What we are going to measure in the tank is gross. And unless it's 60 degrees, exactly 60 degrees, if it's 60 degrees, it's the net and the gross is the same thing. Otherwise, it's going to be gross that we are actually loading and measuring. <clears throat> In order to convert from net to gross or gross to net, you have to have a volume correction factor. Now, the basic thing to remember is if you are converting from gross barrels, which you've actually measured in the tank, to net barrels, you multiply the VCF, or volume correction factor. So remember this is the basic rule. Uh, gross to net, you multiply VCF. For everything else we're doing, we are going to divide. This is about the only time you're going to multiply, with one small exception towards the end that I'll show you. But everything else is divided. If you're going from net to gross, you divide the VCF. Now the VCF is the volume correction factor, and that is based on your temperature and your e API. We talked about API in the um, the other the earlier segments. <clears throat> the API is a, a unit of gravity that is assigned by the manufacturer. Uh, the temperature, of course, can vary depending on the time of the year, uh, time of the day, and so forth. So you would take the temperature and the VCF, look in your uh, sample tables, across the top of the tables, this is table F, there is an API. You come down that column, and on the left-hand side, uh, there is the, the temperature. You come across from the temperature to the API column, and then you get your VCF, uh, your volume correction factor. We'll talk about weight correction factors a little bit later. So the way I'm going to set this problem up, and the thing that I like to do is to list everything that I know on the right hand corner of, of my paper so that I can just go back and refer to that. So we, for this particular problem, and we're going to load to 90% of our capacity, our barge capacity, 
uh, diesel fuel in Miami, Florida. Uh, we are told that the API is 18 and we find that the temperature is 85 degrees. So we put our API here and that is 18. The temperature is 85 degrees. If we look at our Sable tables, we will find that our VCF is 0 0.9904. <clears throat> now later on, we're going to need a weight correction factor. So we go back to our Sable tables. Uh, we look under table D, I believe it is, and there is a weight correction factor. And we talked about this again. You would take your API, uh, which goes down the side of the, the table, go across to the column that is uh, uh, tons, long tons per, uh, at 60 degrees. Um, you come down that column and across from your API and you get your weight correction factor or your WCF. So let's go ahead and look that up, WCF. And we're going to find that it, that is 6.766. And be careful of the decimal points. They're going to be very uh, critical in this um, calculation. Now we talked to about tons per inch immersion in the um, PowerPoints. And each vessel has a uh, an assigned number for its TPI, times per inch immersion. Uh, this is a factor that you would use to figure the, uh, the sinkage uh, by weight. Uh, in this case, the uh, barge has a TPI of 18. So we're gonna put TPI and that is 18. <clears throat> The light draft on this barge, meaning that when it's empty, it still draws two feet, eight inches. So our light draft is two feet, eight inches. Now, the orders say to load our T uh, CMTI barge number one to a uh, capacity of 90% of its capacity. The way we find the capacity is we look in our ullage tables. Now there, in the front of your workbook, there is a uh, diagram of the CMTI barge. It has eight tanks. There are um, four port and four starboard. So we have eight tanks. You look at the ullage table, and the ullage table gives you ullage in barrels and in gallons. We are dealing in barrels. So you will see that the top number is, the ullage is uh, 2,600 barrels. Now that is 2,600 barrels in that tank, each tank, if you load it to the deck, and we are not going to load it to the deck. So if you take uh, 2,600 and multiply times eight, you will come out with 20,800. That is the total capacity of the CMTI barge number one. We're going to load it at 90% of capacity. So we would take, this is 90%. You would move the decimal place, uh, two places to the left. So it'd be 0 0.90 times 20,800. That's going to equal 18,720 barrels. Now these are gross barrels. This is what you would actually measure in your tanks.
to find out what your ullage would be, you would take the 18,720, divide by eight, and find out what the ullage is, and then uh, load it to that point. <clears throat> we want to find out how much this vessel is going to sink, uh, what the change of draft is going to be, uh, and we got some other other things we need to know. We want to know the total draft of the vessel when we're finished loading. So we have to, before we can go any further, we have to convert this gross to a net barrel figure. So we're going gross to net. We'll take the 18,720 and we'll multiply it times the VCF, which is point nine nine zero four and we come out with a net of eighteen thousand five four zero point two eight eight this is our net Now, we've got the net. We want to find out what the change in the draft is going to be. So let me back up a little bit here. And I find it's very helpful to start off. It's a, it's a step down process. And there is a little chart in the front of your workbook that shows this process. You start off with a net. <clears throat> let's, let's draw some steps here. So our net is 18,540.288. This is net barrels. We divide the net barrels the WCF, or the weight correction factor, which is 6.766. When we do that, we come out with a, uh, a number of 27... Seven forty point two. This is two thousand seven hundred forty point two long tons of weight. We take our weight and divide it by the TPI, which is eighteen. And we come up with a number of 152.234. Now this is tons per inch immersion. So this number is the number of inches that the barge will sink if you put 2,740 tons on it. We don't measure our uh, drafts by inches, we measure by feet and inches. So we have to divide this number by 12 to get the number of feet. When we do that, we come out with 12.7 feet. Now this is seven tenths of a foot. This is not seven inches. We have to convert the tenths of a foot into inches. 
In order to do that, we take the point seven times 12 inches, and that comes out to um, eight inches. So the change in draft would be 12 feet, eight inches. This is the change in draft. We have a light draft of two feet, eight inches. We want to know what the total draft of the vessel is going to be. We would add eight and eight, that's 16 inches. Two and two is four. 14 feet, 16 inches. Well, there's only 12 inches in a foot, so you subtract 12. This would give us four inches. And you add that 12 inches back here and gives you 15 feet, four inches. This is our total uh, draft. And that's how we figure out total draft and changing draft. Now, <clears throat> we're told that when we pump off, we're going to be in Portland. The, um, the tide fall in Portland, uh, Portland, Maine, is uh, nine feet. We're going to start discharging at high tide. And at low tide, you will, we will have pumped off half of our load. Uh, one of the questions is, what is the change in manifold height? So the best way to handle this is to draw a little chart. This is your bottom. This is in high tide. This is low tide. We're going to start at um, high tide. And we're going to take off half of this load. Now we're only going to take half of our change in draft. Now our change in draft was 12 feet, eight inches. So half of 12 feet would be six feet. Half of eight inches would be four inches. So this barge is going to come out of the water six feet and four inches when we take half the load off. We're going to start here. So we have nine feet of tide. And as we go down with the tide, we're going to come out of the water uh, with the, uh, a change in draft. So what we have to do is subtract six feet four from nine feet. So you would normally go six feet, four inches and nine feet. You can't do this because you, you don't have anything to subtract inches from. So instead of nine feet, this would be eight feet, 12 inches. Four from 12 is eight, and six from eight is two. So our change in manifold height is going to be two feet, eight inches. Because you started here, you're going down with the tide, but you're coming out of the water with your uh, six feet, four inches from your change in draft. If you had started here, and you were coming out six feet, four inches, and up nine feet, you would add the nine feet to the six feet, four inches. But since you have to keep in mind where you start and which direction you're heading in when you're doing this. I hope this uh, explains this and will help you work the, um, the problems that are in your workbook. Uh, so, have at it. Thank you.